themselves, humble themselves and pray. If they seek my face and humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. I will to all who come to worship on this Lord's Day. We pray that our service of worship will be a blessing to you. Please join me in the call to worship. When the darkness of fear and the deep pit of anger reach toward us, God lifts and carries us through the darkness with hope and light. Lord of hope and life, be with us today. God of mercy and peace, lead our lives. Thanks be to God, whose love is continually with us. Praise, Praise be to God, whose mercy is over us all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our source and our salvation, in love you made us, and by love you have redeemed us. Make your love for us bear fruit in our forgiveness of others that in this life we may know your all-embracing compassion and in the world to come receive the everlasting joy of fellowship you share with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
as loving parents, have compassion for their children, God has compassion for us. Confident in God's love, let us confess our sins together. Loving God, we confess that we have failed to live in harmony with our sisters and brothers. We have been self-righteous in our attitudes, closed-minded in our beliefs, and judgmental in our opinions. We have shunned those whose ways we do not understand, and we have despised those who do not endorse our convictions. Forgive our sins of discord and conceit, and heal our divisiveness and quarreling. Help us to be charitable in our regard for others, that we may dwell in peace with Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen. God's hand of mercy is stretched out to us, making a way through all that threatens us to touch us with grace and hope. We stand before our God, singing praise to the one who turns our despair into joy, our fears into faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please take this time during the time for children to share this peace of Christ with one another. Hey y'all. Today we're going to talk about something that's special. We always talk about things that are important and this is very important because it deals with our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Today we're going to be talking about forgiveness. Has anyone ever done something wrong to you? Something that has hurt your feelings or made you feel sad? Or have you ever done something to someone that was wrong that made them feel bad or their feelings be hurt? Maybe a family member or your parents or maybe even a friend. It's hard to admit when we have done things that are wrong, but it's really important for us to ask for forgiveness and to receive forgiveness. Sometimes we as people have a hard time forgiving, but thankfully, God doesn't have any trouble at all. He gives us mercy and forgiveness all the time. Today I brought a few things that may help us really understand what I'm talking about when we talk about forgiveness. I brought a pencil, a piece of paper, a tissue, a dry erase board, and a dry erase marker. Now, if I have my piece of paper and I scribble my name on there and I accidentally mess up, then it's a good thing that this pencil has an eraser, right? Let's try to erase. Well, after I erased, it it kind of took some of it off, but you can still see a lot of the smudges there. This is a little like human forgiveness. It's important for us to forgive one another and to love one another. But sometimes, even though we really, really try, it's hard because we can still see the smudges there that remind us of what that person has done to us. Now let's take a look at the dry erase board. I wrote my name on this one too. So if I mark on this and then use an eraser or my tissue, we can go straight through it and it cleans right off. I can even use my finger and it erases it. It cleaned it off completely. I can wipe it away and make it look like there wasn't ever anything there to begin with. I can make it look like it never even happened. Even if I use my marker and mark again and again and again and I scribble all over the page, this eraser or my finger or this tissue can erase every single bit of it. This is more about how God's forgiveness is for us. He knows that we've made mistakes and he forgives us time and time again. Not only does he forgive us, but he lets us start over fresh and brand new. 
In our gospel story today, there is a man who owes a lot of money to this king, so much that he's never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to repay it. And the king just says, that's okay, and he erases all of his debt. But that same man it turns around to a friend who owes him a little bit of money, and he gets so angry with him that he throws him in jail. The king was shocked by this because he had just shown this man mercy and forgiveness, but the man had not shown his own friend the same mercy and forgiveness. I think Jesus shares this parable with us to really show us God's love and mercy and forgiveness for us. We deserve to be punished for our sins, but God wipes our slate clean, and we should be thankful in that. And we should show God thankfulness by turning around and showing the same forgiveness to everyone around us that He has shown to us. We should forgive others like He has forgiven us. And our forgiveness is not perfect. We struggle and we need the Lord to help us to work through this and for, try to forgive others as much as we can because that's what He does for us. He has forgiven us for things we haven't even done yet. He has restored and renewed us. And why don't we thank Him for that? Why don't we show Him how much we love Him by showing forgiveness and mercy to others that are around us? Let's close our lesson in prayer. If you will bow your heads and close your eyes, I'll pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for keeping us safe and healthy. Thank you for granting us mercy and forgiveness. Help us to forgive one another. Give us peace and not bitterness. Thank you for erasing our sins. Thank you for your love. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, your word is strong and leads our feet to your holy dwelling place. Strengthen and guide us with your word through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to listen for the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused, then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. The passage opens with Peter asking Jesus how many times he should forgive a member of the church who sins against him. Obviously, this passage is about forgiveness, but it is also about grace, love, and ultimately about being the person God has called you to be. In our faith traditions, we have accepted the idea of forgiveness. In our prayers, we ask for forgiveness for ourselves and sometimes even for others. In our Sunday school classes, we teach forgiveness and the need to be forgiving. In principle, every Christian accepts absolute forgiveness as we are taught in the Bible. But in practice, in our everyday application of Jesus' teachings, 
we somehow forget all those Sunday school lessons, all those prayers, and all those passages where Jesus tells us to forgive. In this parable, Jesus uses the example of a king who was collecting debts owed to him by his slaves. One slave owed him 10,000 talents. So you know, one talent was about 130 pounds of silver. And 100 pounds of silver was equivalent to 15 years of a laborer's wage. So this slave owed the king about 150,000 years of labor. This tells us two things. One, this king made a really bad investment. Two, this slave would never, ever pay off this debt. Yet it was forgiven. Now the other slave who owed 100 denarii could work off that debt in about 100 days. This might be a large sum, but it is nothing in comparison to the other slave who was indebted to the king. The obvious question must be asked. Why could this person not overlook this relatively minor debt when his impossibly huge debt was just forgiven? I think perhaps because as humans we like to keep count. We like to know where we stand and we like to know what to expect. That is why Peter asked Jesus exactly how many times does he need to forgive the person who sins against him at his church. He wants to know how much forgiveness is required and how much is reasonable. He even gives Jesus an answer that is perfect. He tells Jesus seven times. Seven is a holy number. So Peter is more than likely asking Jesus if he must practice perfect forgiveness. When Jesus responds 70 times seven, Jesus is telling Peter, your forgiveness must not only be perfect, it must be beyond perfect. How's that for a kick in the pants? God wants you, God wants us to be beyond perfect in our forgiveness of one another. Think about all those times you have been mad at someone else in our congregation or in our community. Think back to all those times you have been hurt by someone in our congregation or in this community. Think back to all those times you have made someone mad or you have hurt someone else. Can you count them on one hand? Is it less than seven by any chance? I don't want to pretend to know all the inner workings of all the relationships within our community, but I would like to comment on all those that you can remember. Forget them. When Jesus responds to Peter about forgiveness, he is telling Peter to stop counting. He tells Peter to stop counting because the forgiveness Jesus is speaking about in this parable is not forgiveness that can be counted or even understood through legalistic interpretation. As men and women, we live our lives by law. We have legal laws, moral laws, biblical laws, and so forth. These laws allow us to count. They allow us to know where we stand and to know where someone else stands. In our culture, a judge sentences someone to jail and they are forgiven when they have paid their debt to society. If we treat forgiveness as a response to the law, we can either punish or forgive that person. We can keep count on how many times we have forgiven and why we have forgiven based on the law. But Jesus is teaching a type of forgiveness that is not legal based, but instead rooted in love and grace. And God's absolute forgiveness. We see a forgiveness that is intrinsically relational, sourced in love and therefore cannot be counted and cannot be qualified. 
Our morals, our laws, our biblical interpretations can all tell us what is right and what is wrong. They can all tell us when to help and when not to hurt, but they don't enable us to love. This absolute forgiveness is not about regulating our behavior towards someone. This absolute forgiveness is nurturing our relationships with one another and with God. In preparing for this sermon, I read a story by Michael Ball in the book, The Foolish Risk of God. And Ball writes about a boy who came from a Christian home who had offended his parents during Advent with a rather spectacular offense. He was asked to say sorry, but he refused. And the more his parents gently asked, the more stubborn about it he became. Christmas came nearer and nearer, and as far as the boy was concerned, he didn't care if his parents gave him presents on Christmas Day or not. He was not going to say sorry. Eventually, the great day arrived. And far from there being no gifts, there were bigger and better ones than usual. His parents reckoned that the more willful he became, the more the display of their love was required. He immediately collapsed of willfulness. Tears of repentance flowed from this child. I have lived so long keeping count and expecting a tick for tack that I had to read this story a second and third time to understand what had happened. The parents' love was more powerful than stubbornness or embarrassment. Although this child wronged the family and even refused to say sorry, the parents gave even more. Not to show up the boy or make him feel sorry, but to reassure him so that he would know love. In our passage, our understanding of forgiveness as a behavior shifts to include an understanding of forgiveness as a way of being. In our being a child of God, in our being a loved one, in our being someone who loves others, in our being members of the church, we are called to no longer see someone as a plus or a minus. We are no longer count their sins and their blessings. We value them because we recognize their worth in God and their worth in our love. The parents who gave even more pre presence when their child turned from them is an example of someone responding to grace and hope, not someone acting out of principle and power. They lived their lives in reflecting the forgiveness they felt from God. And in turn, they were able to share grace and ultimate forgiveness as the child felt love and understood forgiveness. This passage is not just about forgiving others or even forgiving ourselves. It is about that special relationship between us and God, as well as one another. Jesus tells this parable about a king who represents God. I said earlier the king made a bad investment by making a loan the person can never repay. In our culture of counting gains and losses, winning and losing, being right and wrong, this was a bad investment. But I would bet everyone would consider this a great investment. When we think about the king being God, forgiving our sin, even when we can never make it right. In our forgiveness, God asked us to forgive others. You would think that would be easy for us. Just as it seems so simple in the parable for the slave to forgive the debt of the other slave, yet it is not. In this parable, Jesus teaches about forgiveness, but he also teaches us about how fast and easy we turn away from God. Jesus tells us in this parable how much grace and love God has for us. 
No matter what we have done or how bad off we are, God still is willing to forgive. God is still hoping to share grace, and God still desires to give love to each and every one of us. And on the flip side, when Jesus responds to Peter's question about how members of the church should treat each other, he tells a story about betrayal and lack of grace. The slave did not even care to listen, much less forgive his fellow slave. As members of the church, Jesus is calling us out. We are the ones who have been forgiven and shown love. Yet, Christians throughout this world often turn our backs on one another. We are so quick to judge one another. We are quick to ignore one another. We are quick to throw away our relationships and bury our love. From the minutes of a 16th century church in Switzerland, we hear a story about a man who was asked by the church elders to repeat the Lord's Prayer. But the man acted as though he did not know it because he said, because if he said it out loud, he knew he would have to forgive the man who cheated him. And that was something he had no intention of doing. God, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As we remember the prayer that Jesus taught us, let us also not forget that Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves the person beside you. Jesus loves the people within this congregation, within this community, within this country, within this world. And in response to that love, in response to this amazing knowledge, in response to this forgiveness, be the gospel and look upon one another filled with grace, with hope, and with love. For we are all children of God, called by God, forgiven by God, and most importantly, loved by God. Now is the time not to turn our back to God, it is time for us to turn to God and not turn our backs on one another. Now is the time for us to be the incarnate of this forgiveness that Jesus offers to every single one of us. Now is the time to listen. It's the time to forgive. It's the time to participate in God's healing act of sharing love with one another. Friends, as we gather as a community of believers in our screens in different times and places, we do so affirming our faith, recognizing God's awesome power of love and its effect in our lives. I invite you to join me as we affirm what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God is unfailing in blessing and love. 
With thankful hearts, let us offer up to God a portion of what God has already given us. Please join me in prayer. We have a variety of intentions for offering these gifts to you, loving God. But whatever the reason, whatever might be our purpose, we trust you will use them to bring healing to brokenness, hope to despair, and welcome to the forgotten. Lord, we love to say, I may forgive, but I'll never forget. And we think that we are truly following the ways of Christ. How blind we are, O oh Lord. Forgiveness means wiping the slate clean, not retaining the hurt. It works both ways. Letting ourselves make a decision for healing and reaching out to the one who has hurt us to offer forgiveness and redemption. None of us is perfect. We know that. But Jesus reminded us that love is the ruling component in lives of faithful living. Help us, O oh Lord, really receive the love that you have lavished upon us. Help us understand that love as an agent of forgiveness. And as we bring before you the names of people and situations that are on our hearts, we seek your healing mercies 
and tender love for them. Remind us that the same mercy and love is continually offered to us. Though we falter and fail, though we seek and strive, be with us, gracious Lord, all of our days. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. walk in the strength and confidence that God guides our feet. Therefore will we live for God, showing mercy and loving one another. May the God who protects and defends keep you in safety, mercy, and love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.